Welcome back, everyone. As surprising as this might look to sane people, there are still some nut jobs trying to pass it for perfectly okay to change a work of art to suit an agenda. And if it's a modern one, then all the better. This is evident in a somewhat recent article which was published to try to pass it for normal for Tolkien's work to be changed to adapt itself to modern times. But the article also points out that whatever Tolkien could think about that, well, it just doesn't matter. And wouldn't you know it? This piece of trash, which any sensible person would conclude was written by either a very embittered person or a six-year-old trying to justify why they have painted their action figures' faces with a black highlighter, was written by two Tolkien scholars, or at least they call themselves so. So I would use this term Tolkien scholars when referring to these two people with major air quotes. The article in question is called Lord of the Rings Debunking the Backlash Against Non-White Actors in Amazon's New Adaptation, and it was written by none others than Dimitro Fimi and Maria Rios Maldonado from the University of Glasgow, but who are also well known to Tolkien fans as being these quote-unquote Tolkien scholars that actually are trying to take it against Tolkien and are always criticizing the presence of white white people in fantasy. The article begins with an explanation of what Tolkien's work is and tries to imply that everyone wants to see only white people populate in Middle-earth because of Peter Jackson's adaptation. And let's be fair, we knew they were going to throw Jackson under the bus since this crap show was announced. In any case, shout out to Jackson for those incredible films that brought Tolkien to life and respected the work as much as possible. At least the films from 2001 to 2003. Then it claims, by way of ignoring everything else that fans have mentioned before, that the diverse cast has been given some backlash for having black people play dwarves and elves. They claim that fans wanting accuracy and closeness to the lore they have devoted their time are wrong and have flawed views. The article reads, quote, First, these are imaginary creatures which are not always clearly described in the original books. Tolkien was more interested in metaphysical than biological questions. Still, there is some evidence of dark-skinned elves and hobbits in the drafts of the Silmarillion and the prologue of The Lord of the Rings. First of all, Dimitra, the fact that they are imaginary creatures doesn't give you or the readers over at Amazon Studios the right to change them for the sake of change. After all, bitches like yourself and the fraudulent left you represent would yell at the top of their lungs if such a change would happen to a black fictional character. So, stop being dishonest and admit you are writing this shite only because you're getting something from Amazon, which also makes you and Rios Maldonado no different from the imbeciles they hired to talk nice things about their shite, stinky, flawed series. Second of all, if Tolkien was so interested in the metaphysical, why was a book called The Nature of Middle-earth concerning, well, the biology of elves, the dwarves, and other Middle-earth entities with hundreds of pages, published from works that Tolkien himself wrote about that. Finally, you claim there's evidence in the Lord of the Rings prologue of Black Elves and Hobbits. Fair enough. Let's look at the prologue. Right, here it is. Okay, so let's look at the prologue. A quick look at it tells you there's absolutely nothing about elves, but plenty about hobbits, actually. Look, there is the prologue, and as you can see here, part one says concerning hobbits. That is part one. Then, looking at part two, you have there concerning pipe with. Hmm, nothing about elves. Part three of the ordering of the Shire. Hmm, curious, no elves. Part four of the finding of the ring. Nothing whatsoever tells us anything about elves. Concerning hobbits, however, has a part on page 3 that reads, quote, The hardfoots were browner of skin, smaller and shorter, and they were beardless and footless, end quote. This does not mean, however, that they were African-looking. 
as later on the fallow hides were described as being the forest of both skin and hair, meaning they were all white. The hobbits are then described as white, and the hardfoots are browner not because they are black, but because they are tan. Tolkien's work has a major European influence, and it is mainly from the West, meaning from Finland, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, Germany, England, all those places, all those regions, with major Celtic influences, but also from Norse mythologies. The man took the names for his dwarves, and Gandalf, mind you, from the dwarves of the Norse myths. But Fermi and Rios Maldonado don't let these small details stop them from trying to twist the narrative until they find some coherency with their own agenda. They even have the balls to claim that the man's opinions don't matter. You know, the guy whose work they claim to have studied ripped the University of Fonts, more like if you ask me, and thanks to which they got their degrees. But of course, the man they claim to love so much so as to study him, well, his views, they don't matter. Quote, Second, even if Tolkien had specified that all elves, dwarves and hobbits were white, it still wouldn't matter. Adaptations are original cultural products that can imitate, question, rewrite or interpret source material in various ways. Each adaptation is a new text, and each is an opportunity to update outdated and unacceptable tropes and find ways to represent and normalize non-white characters, end quote. So if his views don't matter, why adapt his work in the first place? Better still, if his opinions on the race and the races he chose are unimportant, why do we have to change them? For your own pleasure and amusement, as you think them as tropes that the fantasy genre needs to fix? Well, let me tell you something, you pieces of shite! If the genre has what you call unacceptable tropes, to fix them, you create something new that changes those, not go back and replace everything that was written before. But of course, two uncreative imbeciles such as yourselves wouldn't be able to do that since your brains have been melted by the idiotic left Glasgow way of thinking there at the university. I miss the old days when schools were tough and had signs with countdowns of how many days had gone by without a stabbing during lunch breaks. Adaptations, when done right, respect the source material. They allow it to be viewed under a different perspective, that of the new medium used to express it. It doesn't mean it has to address the idiotic points of view you have of today because you make it outdated. It is only a product of its time and has nothing to offer for the future. True adaptations and true cultural works are timeless. Tolkien's work has a specific setting in time and place, but the values the heroes have and the fights they face against the evil of their world are things we can all relate to regardless of time and yes, even ethnicity. Look at Fatal J, for instance, who is quite a popular YouTube content creator with a vast knowledge on Tolkien who also happens to be black. He didn't see himself on screen to identify with the characters, that happens on a deeper level, the identification, I mean. But retarded minds like yours more fitting in the current university environment and not in the one people like Tolkien had to endure in their time with lots of work and thinking to do wouldn't even understand that basic concept. You even already pose the let's say, proposition, idiotic as it is, that uh, Tolkien should be reinvented for the 21st century and how you begin this quote-unquote reinvention of the man's work. Well, you start posing the question, as valid as it is uh, for many fans, why not use these characters in places like Herat or Rune, all those places where some darker skin colors might be better suited. Your answer, besides being pathetic, is predictable, and it's the real racist here in the room. Quote, but that would perpetuate and reinforce the racialized view of good and evil in Middle-earth, despite Tolkien's overall message of friendship and cooperation, and despite his raging against the Nazis, the face of evil in Middle-earth is invariably non-white, 
non-European, end quote. <laughs> yes, because Saruman or Gollum are all African, Asian or Latin, right? Because Sauron wasn't described as fair when he was going by Alatar amongst elves, and he certainly didn't present himself fair before the Numenorians. Did you even read the books? You even contradict yourself when you say race doesn't matter and still you want to okay the race changes in this third of a show. But what's more, you also state that adaptations change the meaning of a work. So, when you say it's okay to adapt and update Tolkien, what you are doing is making his work as it is unimportant and you change it, stripping it of its meaning. So for you, race doesn't really matter when it's convenient. But the question is, either it matters or it doesn't. But it can't be the two at the same time just when it's convenient for you. And because Amazon is finally paying you so that you can stop eating your cat food. Well, the author thought about or would think about the work wouldn't even matter either according to these two witches because he sold the rights and with that he can kiss accuracy goodbye. First of all, you nincompoops, he didn't sell them. For this crap show, the Tolkien estate sold only the rights to certain bits of the Lord of the Rings. The rights Tolkien sold in life were to the Saints Company and Amazon didn't buy the rights for their show from this company. Second, recently they said how the finding of some Tolkien's old scratches and changes to his script for the radio adaptations for The Lord of the Rings that aired between 1955 and 1956 is so important and timely because it shows how Tolkien saw adaptations as good to the point of collaborating on them. Ignoring completely that even if this collaboration was taken into consideration for the radio shows, Tolkien felt displeased and did not endorse them, but now it turns out that his opinion is valid because it somehow furthers an endorsement of the Amazon travesty. <laughs> Isn't this idiotic? Amazon? Amazon, I'm talking to you. Either you get your shite together and inform your paid scholars and super fans and writers of what they should say and write and stick to that script, or find better people to endorse your crap show, because these people are contradicting one another in every single turn. It doesn't work that way, Amazon. Femi and Rios Maldonado also tried to make the case that Tolkien never said he wanted to write a mythology for England, but the author clearly stated in one of his letters that his intention was to write something for England, given that the invention of 1066 stripped it from any local tradition that could have been there. He talked about trying to tie the stories to the language, the soil, the feel and the environment. And while he ended that bit of the letter claiming it all was absurd, his initial intention was for the work to have a certain vibe that would mix all Celtic, Norse and any other influence into the story of England and for England. But I want to end this video with the final part of the article, which reads, quote, any new adaptation of such a beloved fantasy world as Tolkien's is bound to disappoint some of the more quote-unquote purest fans. But adaptations are products of their times and a re-envisioning of the original material they are based on, end quote. Then explain to me, you illiterate pieces of rubbish. Is The Godfather one of the greatest movies of all time and itself also an adaptation? Not a good adaptation of the source material? Because that film was headed for disaster when Paramount got the rights. And they, in their infinite stupidity, I mean, I mean wisdom, wanted the film to be an updated film that would take place in 1970s America. It was only thanks to Francis Ford Coppola's fighting for the film to be set in the same time as the novel that the movie became a timeless success. I bet it's a poor adaptation because they don't have Marlon Brando exploiting blacks or Al Pacino playing his serpico character, picking up gangsters selling dope in the corners of the Bronx or Harlem. And needless to say, the wasted opportunity they had by making the Corleone family a group of people in charge of disco nightclubs for drugs and orgies to run rampant while wearing their open shirts and their bank jeans. <laughs> Clowns! 
That's what you are. You are neither talking scholars nor movie experts, but clowns trying to lick Amazon's boots until you peel the leather off of them. Do us all real talking fans a favor and shut the fuck up. Let me know down below what you think about this article and the Amazon attempt at selling these to those who believe they are destroying talking. See you next time.